wherever you park the new Lotus Emira, it looks stunning. I thought it looked great in the studio and on the test track, but out in the wild it is visually every inch the supercar that you can buy for sports car money. Even at the £80,000 you'd need for this particular first edition spec car, it still looks like a bargain. So, in some ways, that's job done for Lotus. Plenty of people will be seduced by these knockout aesthetics and buy it for those alone. The beauty with the Lotus, well, it has to be more than skin deep, really, doesn't it? How it drives is integral to its appeal. So, we're going on a road trip. We're going to take this to its second spiritual home. The home of somebody that is well, almost as synonymous with Lotus as Chapman himself. We're heading for the Scottish stomping ground, the family farm of arguably the greatest racing driver ever, Jim Clark. I've tried to imagine what Clark might do if Chapman chucked in the keys to a new road car on a Friday evening, just as he was setting off for home. What route would he take? I think might have taken a route like this. We've started off by heading through the Pennines, up along the spine of England. It is so beautiful up here. Bleak, but beautiful. First impressions about the way this drives, well for me all centre around the steering. It's actually quite heavy steering, certainly around the straight ahead, but it is full of feel. But one of the things you have to do is, because it's heavy, you think, well, actually, you ought to sort of kind of grip it quite, quite firmly, quite tightly. But actually, if you just release your grip a bit, hold it relatively lightly, then you get more communication coming back through. You feel how it moves over cambers and bumps. Then it's really lovely. Just small inputs, and you can feel how the car is moving across the surface underneath you. It feels really well planted, this car, as well. And obviously I've mentioned before when I drove it on track, but it's really easy to place with those front arches nicely in your peripheral vision the whole time. So although this is quite a wide car, it gives you a lot of confidence from the way it sits on the road and the view out. That hydraulic power assisted steering really is wonderful too. Weighty, but with a lovely amount of unfiltered feedback. Instantly, as I said, on track, this has a very Lotus feel to it in terms of that, that bit of roll, sort of long travel suspension. Because of that long travel suspension as well, the steering almost feels a little bit sort of slow, not in a bad way, just in a calming way, which again adds to that sense of confidence in the car. You just peel it into corners, it makes you concentrate on being really smooth with it. The car suspension is the firmer of two passive setups available for the Amira. Compared to the Tour setup, this Sport Tune has springs that are 5 Newton meters per millimeter stiffer front and rear, taking them up to 65 at the front and 115 at the rear. The dampers also have more compression and increased low to mid speed rebound. Ride height, however, remains the same. It's slightly curious because at times it seems absolutely fine. You think, why on earth would you need the Tour? At other times it seems unremittingly sport in its nature and almost sort of too tough. On the motorway it's absolutely fine, it really doesn't, doesn't beat you up at all, but on some of the roads around here that we've experienced even just so far, it really does feel pretty firm. On some bumpy roads, but not all, it almost has the competitive ride quality of an RS. But on smoother roads and over speed bumps, in fact, it has none of the tight busyness of something like that. And it seems capable of playing the GT card too, which is, well, a little confusing. It's so sort of lonely up here. You really get the feeling that all of humanity is either on the A1 or the M6, and it's just this big expanse of nothing in the middle. 
Of course, this is not the Australian outback, so you do come across civilization occasionally, but lots of the less spectacular linking bits of road are still great to drive. I love this bit of road, it just meanders along following the path of the river and actually it sort of mirrors how I think the Amira likes to be driven following the path of least resistance through this tunnel of trees everything's so green in the country at this time of year the yellow flash through all this greenery very lotus colouring very Jim Clark colouring actually because the first time they added that yellow stripe in was when Lotus went to Indy, went across to America. One of the things I'd love to be able to tell you about is the sort of the build quality and things like that. But this is a pre-production prototype and it is certainly not sort of blissfully bug free. There are some certainly electrical gremlins, there are various lights on the dash which have been there the whole time and I know about it, they didn't warn me about it beforehand. These seats also aren't quite the finished item. Um, so I feel like I'm sitting a little bit high, there's perhaps not enough lumber in here. Uh, so that's something that will hopefully improve for the production models, I'm sure they will. But I kind of got to tell you about it, but equally I can't really pass ultimate judgement or comment on them. Which is a little bit frustrating, but there we go. One of the things I really like is just being able to look in the rearview mirror and see that little release valve working away. Because in an era where so much in you know, the feeling of the mechanicals of a car, particularly to do with the engine, hidden away under plastic covers in so many cars. It's just a nice bit of well, connection to it. it. Gives the car a little bit more character. In terms of its usability, this really is a notch up. We've obviously got an awful lot of Volvo switch gear in here, but it's nice switch gear. It, it works, it doesn't look sort of, well, overly familiar from anywhere else, I don't think, but it just feels quality and it's, it's sort of homogenous, it all works together. It really does lend the car a sort of a much more premium feel. After heading into Kielder Forest and stopping briefly to stretch the legs, gaze out across the water and contemplate the terrifying rally stages nearby, it was time to leave England behind. Welcome to Scotland. Across the border, into the borders. And look at that, a rainbow to greet us. We have had every type of weather on this journey. Rain, sunshine, snow, no, we haven't had snow, actually. So no, we haven't had every type of weather, but it's, it's been changeable. At least it felt like a proper test. And sometimes I think you need a long journey to really get to know a car's dynamics. Similarly, I think you also need to spend time in a car like this to understand how you feel about the ergonomics and the, sort of the general layout of it. Things like just having door bins here that are big enough, that's something you wouldn't really get in the Lotus before. We've obviously got the cup holders here, the big screen for Apple CarPlay, things like that that you, you really do appreciate more on a long journey than just a quick trip around the block luggage space too on a long journey. This has been pretty good. Perhaps not quite as good as it came in, but there's a lot of space actually just behind the seats here for a couple of cases and then see more space in the actual boot back there. Although that does get quite warm so perhaps best not to put the ice cream in there when you come back with the shopping. The reason for that heat is obviously the 394 brake horsepower, 310 pound foot, 3.5 litre supercharged V6. The engine is, is curious, it, it definitely has character, it, it sort of disabuses you almost straight away when you walk up to it and you have all those supercar looks and then you start it up and it, it doesn't sound tremendous, certainly not from inside of the car, I think it sounds better from outside and actually if you put the windows down certainly in sport and track mode, then, then you get more of the V6, you get more of that, that harder edge, and it definitely sounds better. Sport and track mode, which you can obviously access from just down here, you have to click it once to engage it, and then click it again to select, which is a tiny bit annoying. I'd prefer if it was just sort of one touch. 
but you almost want to do that straight away as soon as you get in because it adds in some sort of pops and crackles and just a bit more, a bit more character. In terms of the actual delivery from the engine, you get from the supercharger a nice instant response, but then in terms of it building, you do need to chase that performance but it doesn't necessarily crescendo. It's an engine that obviously if you've driven uh, a recent Exige or an Evora then you'll be very familiar with and that's interesting too because I think it perhaps makes this car feel sort of more tied to the older generation than you imagine it is certainly walking up to it and to that extent I think the AMG engine which we know is coming with the DCT could change the whole character of this car and just, just freshen it up, make it feel as modern and as different as I think it is elsewhere in the package. Don't get me wrong, I still think it's great that Lotus has put this drivetrain into the Amira. To have the option of an H-pattern gearbox with a theatre of a visible linkage is certainly to be celebrated. It's definitely not the greatest, slickest shift and you mustn't rush it but it does add into the tactile nature of this car. I wouldn't say it feels rapidly quick, but it feels plenty quick enough as a road car. Certainly not 62 miles an hour in 4.3 seconds and 180 miles an hour flat out are in theory enough to keep a Cayman GT4 honest. Where I think this car really excels is in the sort of the shallower bends where you can get a really nice flow going almost minimal steering inputs. What I don't enjoy so much is the tighter corners like this because it just seems to go away from you in the tighter corners. Where it should be sort of giving more feedback, waiting up a bit, it just, it's almost a bit like the outside tyre wants to tuck in a bit. Then you get into these sort of corners and it's beautiful again. Tiny inputs really just works with the road. That slightly soft, almost imprecise front end in tighter corners is certainly odd and a bit disappointing, as the feedback falls away just when you want it. But to the same extent that I'd like to try a tour spec chassis to see how the ride is different, I'd also be interested to try the Amira on its other, more aggressive tyre option, because when you swap the Goodyear Eagle F1 Supersports for Michelin Cup 2 rubber, you also get some setup changes, namely some toe-in at the front and a touch more negative camber at the rear and that could make quite a difference. Anyway, as it stands, it is very much a Lotus, with a distinctive way of doing things. It means that you have a lovely feel through the steering, that balance to it, but it also means it does feel quite prescriptive in its handling, like the Elise and the Evora did. It's not a car that feels sort of sharp, that you want to sort of grab by the scruff of the neck. It's not that playful, I wouldn't say. It's a car that rewards economy of input. It's a very Clark car in a way. Sadly, buying an Amira won't instantly imbue you with Jim Clark's natural talent and famous smoothness behind the wheel, but try to emulate that smoothness, and I think you get the best out of and most rewarding feelings from this new Lotus. And what about the rest of our imagined route north? Well, I think the two-time F1 world champion might have popped into the old RAF airfield at Charterhall for a few laps at sunset, perhaps pausing to ponder for a moment his first race victory there in 1957. Not in a Lotus, in fact, but a Porsche 356A. Then onwards, north through some of the lanes that today host the wonderful tarmac rally named after him. Then into the small, sleepy town of Duns that has honoured him with a wonderful museum. He might have stopped for a drink, perhaps some fish and chips. Then the final leg down the dark roads, the signs illuminated by the Amira's excellent headlights. The last one reading just Churnside. A home run. A very fitting test. <laughs>